Hey guys, thanks for joining me for an episode of Learn to Play Games. My name is Lance, and today we're going to take a look at a brand new game from Arcane Wonders called Viral. This is a two to five player game, and it takes roughly an hour to an hour and a half to play. It is a competitive game, so each of the players is working against the other players to gain the most viral points to be the overall winner of the game. So in the game itself, each player is taking on the role of a virus that has infected a patient, and they're trying to spread their virus throughout the patient's organs to gain viral points or victory points that will help them unlock new mutation cards that they'll get to draw and will allow them to be the overall winner of the game if they have the most points at the end. But the other players are going to be doing exactly the same thing and there's also the immune system which is going to fight back against the viruses by having crises in these different organs depending upon the number of players and viruses that are in those, which you guys will see in the video. So as far as my opinions of this game so far, I was a little hesitant at first because of the setting of this, and I do have a medical background, so I've been, you know, inundated with this stuff throughout my uh, career, and so I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about this one, but after playing it a couple times, I would highly recommend this game. As usual, Arcane Wonders really does an excellent job with their games. They make sure that they're very polished, and they play very well when they release them. And this is no exception. Of course, Dice Tower is given it their Dice Tower Essentials Award, so you have that going into it, and it is just a great game. They did a great job of balancing everything, and there's a lot of different strategy to this game, but they keep it simple. It, there's not a lot of things that you have to do, but there's a lot of choices you have with the little things that you can choose, which is a really nice feature, and it makes it very easy to teach other players but it also has that depth that you can really dig into after you've played it a number of times as well. And each time you play it, you can approach it in a different way. And like I said, the, uh, there's multiple different ways of approaching this game. Players can go heavy into the organs that are worth the most points. But the downside to that is that those organs a lot of the times will grant more research points, which is a negative thing, because if the player ever has uh, their marker at the top of the research track, then the doctor that's basically taking care of this patient uh, develops a cure and will basically wipe out all that player's viruses at the end of the turn unless those viruses are shielded. And so that kind of basically gets the players that jump ahead real quick in points, they'll kick them back a couple turns as they're trying to build back up and give the players a chance to get back in it. So that's a really interesting feature as well. And the different aspects of the game. So each turn, the players are going to play a organ card that they're going to focus their, their, their attention on that turn, and a mutation card, which will allow them to do different actions. Now, once they've played that card, it's going to go into a hold pile, basically, for a turn or two before they get it back. So you're going to have to play and plan out your turns in a way, because you may not be able to go back to that organ for a couple of turns. So you're going to have to work with what you have, basically, as your turns go on until you were able to get some of those things back. So that's a really interesting feature that I really enjoyed as well, as it really does make you kind of think ahead a little bit and plan out what you're going to do. And like I said, Arcane Wonders is a great company and they put out, they puts out very high quality games. So I never really worried about picking up one of their titles, as I know that they're going to put the time and effort into making it a good title. So like I said, I would definitely recommend checking this one out if you guys have a chance. I know it sold really well at Gen Con this year, so there should be a lot of them out there. I'm not sure when it's hitting retail, but as soon as it does, I would definitely recommend uh, having a look at it. And let's go ahead and head to the table, and I'll teach you guys how to play. There are three different types of cards you're going to find in Viral. The first type is the event cards, which during each round of the game, one event card will be resolved, which it will list what conditions it has at the bottom of the card that need to be resolved for that event. Then we have mutation cards, which there are two different types. There are mutation cards that players will gain during the game, and then there are five basic mutation cards that each player will have at the beginning of the game, and those cards have their icon in the bottom corner of those cards. From there, each mutation card is going to list the actions that that player can perform during their turn, the picture of the virus or mutation, the name of that mutation, and then the victory points that mutation is going to be worth at the end of the game. And again, the basic mutations will never grant players victory points. Some of the actions on these mutation cards are also going to have a blue background, which means that those mutations can, or those actions can only be performed in the zone that the players have played that round 
as you guys will see later on. Finally, then each player will also have six zone cards, one for each of the zones, and each of these cards back will correspond with the player's color and virus that they chose. And each of these cards will also give the breakdown of the different organs in each of those zones. So for example, zone one just consists of one organ, the brain, but zone two consists of two organs, the heart one and heart two. Each player will choose a virus they wish to play as and gain their dashboard for that virus, which will list the different actions that the players will have on their mutation cards throughout the game and what they do. It also has the spot for where they play their first action during their turn and their second action, and when they're doing their cleanup, where the cards will go for the timer. Then each player will also receive their six zone cards, which will have the icon of their virus on the back, their five basic mutation cards, which will list their icon in the bottom corner. They will receive three wood tokens of their color, and based on the number of players, as you guys can see on this chart, they will receive a number of virus tokens, which we're going to play a three-player game, so we will receive all eight. Before I take you guys through board setup, I want to go through out the layout of the board real quick. So going down the side track here is the victory track, and as players gain victory points, they'll move their tokens down throughout this track. When they hit certain areas, they will gain new mutation cards, and when the first player reaches 21, then these, the point track, uh, tokens will be flipped over to their blue sides on each of the zones. Then we have the crisis tokens here, which will be placed, and a chart listing the number of players and viruses and how many viruses need to be in an organ before a crisis token is placed based on the number of players. Then we have the playing area, which is consisted of six zones labeled one to six. Each of these zones consists of one to three organs, and each zone is also going to be connected by the arteries and veins in the body. So starting in zone one, we have the brain, which is one organ, in zone two, we have the heart, which is broken into two separate organs. The lungs are also broken into two separate organs for zone three. Zone four has two organs, the liver and pancreas. Zone five is consisted of three organs, the stomach, large intestine, and small intestine. And zone six has the kidneys broken into two organs. You'll also notice on the arteries and veins, that they have arrows, which is for movement and is the only way that or, uh, viruses can travel throughout the organs. Some sections, such as the yellow section, will have arrows going both ways, and the adjacent organs will also have arrows going both ways, which means that the viruses can move between those sections as well. So, and then on the other side of the board are these six different steps in each round. And I'm going to go through these more throughout the game, so I'm not going to cover each one of these in detail now. The first step in board setup is to determine the first player in the game. So the easiest way to do this is to grab one token from each player that is playing the game, mix them up and have one player draw blindly to determine the starting player. So it'll be purple for us, so he will receive the first player token. And then the players can place their markers in the tiebreaker track based on the player order. So the purple player will be the, the top player on the track, and then going in clockwise order, gray will be the second player, and yellow will be the last player on that track. From here then we're going to go ahead and deploy each player's viruses. So again, looking at the tiebreaker track, it's going to tell us the order which we will do in reverse for this step. So each player in turn will take one of their viruses and place it in one of the organs in the zones. The couple rules for this though are that a player can only have one virus in each organ and a, a player cannot choose to place a second virus in the same zone unless there are no other options to be played. So we're going to go ahead and start with yellow. So he's going to go ahead and place a virus in the heart. Moving over in counterclockwise order to gray, he's going to go ahead and take one of his and place it, he's going to go in the small intestines. Moving over to our purple player, he's going to go ahead and take a virus and place it in the brain. 
then we will go back to yellow and we will do this until all of the organs are filled with viruses. So again, yellow cannot place it in the heart as he already has a virus in the zone and he cannot place it in another zone that already contains a virus. So he's going to go ahead and place it in the kidneys. Gray will come over here. From here, then each player is going to place a scoring token on the victory track in the top corner. The last token of each player will be placed on the bottom row of the, vi of the research track. Then you will place the crisis tokens from lowest to highest down the chart on the side. From here, then you're going to go ahead and grab the event deck, which has the viral on the back, shuffle it up, and randomly draw six cards from it. The rest of the cards can be returned to the box as they won't be used this game. These cards will stay in the order that they're in, and you can go ahead and flip them up and place them in the event section on the board. Then you can go ahead and grab the zone tiles, shuffle them up, and draw six of them again without looking at them. The other two can be returned to the box again as they won't be used. These can be shuffled up. And again, you're going to place them out on their blue or on their uh, white side as they're double sided. The blue side will be flipped over when the first player gets to 21. And each of these tokens is going to list the victory points that the player will gain if they control a zone and the number of research points that they will either gain or lose if they control that zone as well. Then we're going to shuffle up the mutation deck and place it somewhere in the board where the players can, can reach it and flip over the top three cards for the players to see. The last step is to place the step marker on the first step of the round and we're ready to begin with our purple player. Each game round is going to consist of six steps which are identified on the side of the board here and you're just going to work your way down through each of those steps. And each step is going to have some little pictures that will help you and explain what the step does. So starting with step one, the first thing we're going to do, except for during the first round, so this is the first round so we won't do this, but in subsequent rounds, the first player token is going to pass to the next player in clockwise order. From there, then we're going to go into the player actions. From there, all players are going to simultaneously choose one zone card to play and one mutation card from their hands and place it face down next to their number one slot on the left side of their board. Once all players have done this, then starting with the first player and proceeding in clockwise order, each player is going to reveal their cards and resolve their actions. So as we talked about earlier, each player is going to have one card for each of the six zones that is on the board. They're also going to have a starting set of five muta mutation cards, and each mutation card, as we talked about, is going to have different actions that the player can perform during their turn. And each of these actions that have the blue background around it must be performed in the zone that they've selected for their card. So selecting the proper zone with the mutation is critical to making the most of your turn. So with our gray player here, he has a pretty good grasp of zone 5 already, which he's going to go ahead and choose that, and he's going to try to gain control of it completely. And he's also going to play the basic resilience card, which is going to allow him to place one new virus in that area and add shields to two other ones. So now that he's selected both the zone card and the mutation card, he's going to place those face down on this side of the board. Once all players have done that, then starting with the purple player, the players are going to reveal their cards and resolve those in turn. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example of this. So all of our players have selected their cards, and so starting with our purple player, he's going to go ahead and reveal his cards and resolve them first. So he chose zone 4, which is the liver pancreas, and he's going to perform a basic attack, which allows him to place one new virus, or infect with a new virus, and then perform an attack. 
and he can do these actions in any order that he chooses. So he's going to go ahead and place a virus first, so he'll place a virus in the pancreas, and then he's going to perform an attack on the gray virus, which will eliminate it from the board. At this point now he has control over zone 4. So moving over to the gray player to perform his turn, since he's the next one in clockwise order, the gray player has chosen to go with zone 5, which is our zone over here, and he is going to do an infect action with two shield actions. So he's going to go ahead and do his shield actions first, so he'll shield here and there by flipping over his token so that it shows the shield side, and then he's going to go ahead and infect here. So his turn is done, and then we'll move over to the yellow player, who is the last one to go. And he has chosen zone 6, which is the kidneys, and he is going to go ahead and do two infections. So he'll add one here and one there. Now that all our players are done, they're going to go ahead and do this same process again, this time adding the cards to the other side. So again, starting with our purple player, he's going to go ahead and reveal his cards. So he selected the lungs this time, so zone 3, and he is going to place two new, or infect two new viruses in there. So he's going to go ahead and do two into lung, the second lung, which is going to meet our demands for a crisis. So we're going to take the lowest crisis token, which is number one, and place it in there as we have three viruses. And in a three-player game, three viruses will cause a crisis. Moving over to our gray player, he has selected the heart, or zone two, and he is going to do a basic migration. So he's going to build a place one virus, which he must do in one of the heart chambers. So he's going to place them here. And then he gets to move two of his viruses if he chooses. Now, during a player's turn, when they play a card, they can choose to use any or all or none of the actions that are on their card. It's totally up to them. They don't have to use all of them if they don't want to. So he is going to go ahead. He is going to go ahead and move this virus out. So when he moves it out, he must follow the stream that it's on, so he's going to shift it up, and it's going to keep moving into the heart here. And he's pretty good in everywhere else. He doesn't really want to move any of his other viruses. So at that point, his turn will be over, and we'll move over to the yellow player to finish up his turn. So he has chosen the heart, and again, he is also going to do a basic migration. So he gets to place a virus and do two moves. So he's going to go ahead and move here. So this guy will shoot up and into the heart, which will cause a crisis. And he's going to go ahead and place his second virus over here, which will cause a crisis in that chamber as well. From there, now that all of our players have done their two actions, now it's time for the cleanup step of the turn. So you're going to retrieve any of your cards that you have from a previous round that are underneath the or above the timer icon. And then you're going to move the two pairs of cards that you've played this round up to that spot. Now we're ready to move into step two, which is the research step. During the research step, we're going to determine which player controls each zone and award victory points. To control a zone, you must have at least one virus in every organ in that zone. And if more than one player has a virus in every organ, then the one with the most total viruses in the zone is going to control it. If there's still a tie, then you're going to reference the tiebreaker table to determine who will win. If no player controls, then no victory points are going to be awarded. And each player that controls a zone is also going to add or subtract the research points that are listed on the token in that zone. So we're going to go ahead and start in zone 1, and so our purple virus is the only player in that zone, so he is going to gain one victory point as there's only one organ in that zone, so he will gain that. 
and he is going to gain one negative research, so he can't move any farther down as he's in the lowest spot. So then we'll move into zone two. So zone two has got a lot going on. It's gonna be both of the organs, so heart one and heart two. And so both player, the gray player and the yellow player have viruses in both chambers. So then we're gonna compare numbers. The gray player has two and the yellow player has three. So the yellow player is going to have control so he is going to gain one point, and he's also going to gain one research. So he'll move up his token on the research track by one point. Moving into zone three, we have the purple player with viruses in both chambers again. So he will control this zone, so he's going to gain three victory points which is gonna put him on the first mutation card. So he's gonna get to choose either one of the three mutation cards that are showing, or he can do a blind draw from the top of the deck. So he's gonna go ahead and take this one here. And so he will add this to his hand, and we will reveal a new mutation card. From here, then we also are gonna to have to add three research to his research track, so he's up there. Moving into zone four, which puts us over here. Again, the purple player is doing really well. He's got both of those as well. So he's gonna gain two points for that and two additional research. Moving into zone five, the gray player has a virus in each of those zones. And so he has control of it. So he's gonna get two points plus zone five gives you a bonus point. So he'll get three points for that and one research. Moving into the sixth and final zone, the yellow player has control of that, and so he will pick up four victory points. And he has passed the first mutation, so he is gonna go ahead and get to take a mutation card. So he'll take this one here, and he's also going to gain three points on the research track. Step three is the event. So we'll move our token down, and then we're going to resolve the top card on the event deck. So this one is indigestion, and it says that all viruses in zone five are going to gain a shield. So our gray player has already gotten two of the viruses with shields, so he'll flip over his third down here, and the yellow player will have a shield added to his. Once the event is resolved, then this card will be discarded back to the box, and the next one will be revealed for the players to see what's gonna happen next round. Moving on to step four, immune response. So during this step, we're gonna resolve crisis tokens in order of their number, starting with the lowest number. And there are two possibilities with this. If there are no viruses in the organ with the current crisis token, then you're simply going to just return the crisis token to the crisis area. Otherwise, if there are viruses in there, then each player that has the most viruses in that organ is going to score two victory points. Every other player that has viruses in that organ is going to score one victory point, and then from there, then you're going to remove all viruses from the organ, unless shielded, and return the crisis token to the crisis area. If there happens to be any ties, then you're going to use the tiebreaker chart to determine the winners. So our first crisis over here has two different viruses in it. We have the purple virus and the yellow one. Purple has the most total viruses in there, so he's going to gain two victory points. And again, he's going to gain his second card, so this time he's gonna go ahead and take one off the top and he'll add it to his hands. And then these three will be discarded to the bottom of the deck and three new cards will be placed. And then the yellow virus is going to gain one point. From here then our players are gonna lose their viruses and they're gonna be returned to their dashboards and then the token will be returned there. So then we're gonna move over to the second crisis, which has one of everybody in it. So then we'll move down to the tiebreaker charts. And again, the purple virus is the highest virus. So he again, he's gonna gain two, and then each other player will gain one. And then gray has just gotten his first mutation, so he's gonna take this card here. From here, then all the players are gonna return their viruses, and then the token will be returned as well. Moving over to the last one here, again, we have yellow now with the most viruses, so he's gonna gain two, and he has moved past his, 
So he's going to go ahead and take this one, and Gray is going to pick up one more point. And then from there, then they will be returned to their guys. And that will be there. Step five is the cure step. So if a player's research token is at the top space of the research chart, then that player will remove all of their non-shielded viruses from the board. Then return the research token to the bottom of the chart. So our purple player here has been a little too aggressive with the table. And so he is going to remove all of his viruses that are not shielded. So he is going to lose all the rest of these because none of them have been shielded. And then he will return his research token all the way back down to the bottom. So the final step in each round is updating the tiebreaker chart so that it matches the order of the scoring track in reverse. So the player with the most victory points is going to be moved to the last place of the tiebreaker chart. So our purple player is in the lead. So he will be moved to the last place. Then it'll go to our yellow player to be in the middle. And our gray player is the lowest on the score track. So he will be highest on the tiebreaker chart. From there, then we're going to release all viruses that were absorbed, which we none of our players absorb viruses this round. So we don't have to worry about that. And I'll show you guys what that is in a little bit. The game is going to be played over six rounds. And a good way to remember when the game is going to end is when the event box is open and all the events have been played. So during the final rounds, the final event will be played and removed and this box is open. So at the end of the rounds, the final scoring will be determined. So during that, the players are going to gain one victory point for each zone where they have at least one virus in them. From there, then the players are going to also add victory points from any mutation cards that they have. So except for their basic ones that they every player comes with, a lot of the mutation cards will have a victory point in the bottom corner or multiple victory points. Finally, then the players will compare their victory points on the scoring track, and the player that has the most victory points at the end will be the overall winner of the game. So now that I've taken you guys through the six steps of a round, let's go ahead and take a closer look at each one of the actions that the players could perform based on the mutation card that they've played. So the first one is the infect action, which will allow a player to place a new virus in an organ based either on the card, the zone card that they played, or if it does not have a blue background, then they can place it in any organ that they choose. And when you place a virus, you must place it on the basic side, not the side with the shield. Then we have the crisis icon, which will allow us to place the lowest numbered crisis token available on any organ. An organ can only have one crisis token at a time. And you can, you can place a crisis token even if it doesn't meet the requirements of the, car, or the crisis chart. So, for example, we have the Deadly Invasion guy up there, which will allow us to infect an organ and then place a crisis token in that organ. And it, would, it must, with that one, it must be in an organ that we've played the zone for. The next action is an attack action, which will allow us to remove one virus that belongs to another player from an organ. You must have at least one virus in that organ. So, for example, if our player here was not shielded and our yellow virus had played an attack mutation, he would, he would be able to remove an enemy virus from an organ as long as it doesn't have a shield. Now, if an enemy organ or an enemy virus has a shield, when he, the yellow virus performs an attack, then he would, allow, he would flip that virus over to its non-shielded side. The next action is magnetic. In an organ where you have at least one virus, you may pull a virus from an adjacent organ into your organ or push a virus from your organ to an adjacent organ. And an organ is considered adjacent if it touches another organ. So for example, with our lungs, they touch each other, so they are considered adjacent. Same thing with our zone five, each of the organs touches the other organ, so they're considered adjacent. So in this example, let's go ahead and say that the gray player had, had played an, an action or mutation card that has the magnetic action. He could choose to push our other virus out of his zone into an adjacent organ. Or if he had 
another, if he, this guy had played it, he could pull the virus in there or push him into another adjacent organ if there was one, which in this situation he could pull but not push. Finally, we have the absorb action, which will allow you to choose one of your viruses in an organ, and then you're going to place all other viruses in that organ underneath your virus. And again, these, the, all of the viruses are going to be released in step six. So let's go ahead and say that we had our gray player, or well, let's do this. So let's say that we had our yellow player here, and he has a virus that he plays an absorb action on. So all the other viruses in that spot will be absorbed by him and will be placed underneath his token. Now if he moves, then all the other viruses are going to move with him. And if that particular virus is defeated or removed, then those other viruses will be released in the spot that he's in. The shield action will allow you to flip one of your viruses to the shield side so that it is up. So if our virus here was shielded, he would be placed, flipped over with the shield side showing. And the last action is the move action, which will allow us to move one of our viruses from one organ to an adjacent organ or to follow the uh, arteries and veins to the next location on their path. So for example, if our yellow virus over here did a move action, he could move into this organ here by following the arrows, and you must always follow the direction of the arrows. So this one shows that they go either way, and the same with the yellow path, so he could choose to follow that into one of the other organs that it connects, or he could leave through the vein and move following the vein and following the arrows to the next spot that it dumps. So the vein will dump him into the heart, and he could not choose to go through the artery as it shows an arrow going into the pancreas, so he could not leave through that path. Well, I hope you guys found that video helpful. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the comment section below, and I'll do my best to answer them. And if you like this video, if you enjoy what I do, please consider hitting that like button and subscribing to my channel, as it really does help me grow and to bring new and exciting games to you guys. I've also started a Facebook and Twitter account, so I'd love to see you guys over there. I'm going to do my best to update that with games that I'm either working on or playing or excited about or just general game news or whatever else uh, I can post on those pages. And I'd love to see you guys over there providing uh, comments or things that you're doing or games you're playing or games you'd like me to cover. I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts and have your support on those pages as well. And I'd love to hear what your guys' opinions of this game are in those comments. Let me know what you guys think, if this is one that you're looking to pick up, if this is one that you're excited about. I know this is a big deal at Gen Con this year, as this is going to be a main release uh, for Arcane Wonders. So, are you guys looking to pick this one up? I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts. And as always, thanks so much for watching my videos. I do really appreciate that you guys take the time to watch my videos and to leave me feedback on them. So, until next time, I will see you guys later.